And we're back it's still at the uh, AGI Foundation Austin 2025 event. Uh, social events going really well. It's pretty noisy over here. And uh, we have teams with us today. Hi, how are you? I'm great. So we have people from the industry, people from academics. Tell us about yourself. What do you do? I'm a professor in computer engineering and second year appointment in computer science from Johns Hopkins University. And I'm also one of the technical program committee chairs in the Academy of Track for AGI Foundation. Interesting. So let's jump at it. AGI and you're active in the AGI Foundation. How do you see this? I don't know if it's a new technology. It's like a new name on a set of technologies. It's evolving super fast. How do you see applications in your domain for AGI? Yeah, so HAI computing is not really a new concept. So we have had this in uh, all these different names, embedded computing, local processing, yeah. onboard processing. But now that it's uh, kind of the role of HAI and H computing comes very critical because of all these exciting applications yeah. that coming and also the, with the uh, you know advent of all these foundation models that very, very computation intensive and memory intensive. Yeah. So the, the importance of edge AI computing becomes even more important. So, for example, in my um, uh, research, which are all about uh, embodied intelligence and robotics, edge AI computing or edge computing um, plays a key essential role to uh, make the robotics more reliable and performing in real time. Okay. So, in, in robotics, and uh, in general, so one of the key requirements is that to be able to reliably interact with the environment in real time, yeah. be able to operate in a distributed fashion, reliably making sure that all the decision making is happening in real time. And on the other side, on the other hand, we want to have a lot of operations. So most of these robots now, it is, they have multiple different sensor modalities, okay. yeah. perception different, you know, um, kind of sense in terms of the audio, LiDAR, radar, uh, as well as, obviously, everyone is just using large language yeah. models, yeah. maybe as part of the planning of, uh, basically, navigation yeah. of these robots or operation of these robots. So if you think about it, if you want to put all these devices and these operations on the cloud, so there will be a lot of bottlenecks. So that's where the edge computing comes. Interesting. Interesting. And how much trust do people put into that piece of software, which is different from some piece of hard real-time software that is deterministic? So it is AGI as reliable for application, as sensitive or critical as a medical robotic arm or something like that? Very, very good point. As you know, the heart of my research is basically benchmarking this type of edge computing versus the cloud computing that you can have maybe more powerful models yeah, and yeah. computation on the cloud versus that you have a very sort of constrained processor that uh, you need to fit all these yeah, models yeah. in it. So obviously the accuracy and uh, performance in terms of the accuracy always gets a, a major issue when you go to the edge computing yeah. because edge computing by default means that you know so you're computing on some less computation yeah, yeah, power, yeah, you know, yeah. so power, power. Yeah. Yeah. True. True, but they're more specialized though, right? Because yeah. you have you have exactly. one set of sensors and data points and you will try and determine what's the what's the actual outcome of a series of environmental data you're getting from this limited set of sensors. But you're very specialized. You're not you're not using a generative AI thing to Am I doing good? Or, you know, it's like kind of a, something very specific. Yeah, very good point. For example, in the domain of robotics or embodied intelligence, and where we are putting the foundation models like the like large language models. So the large language model can be pointing as a domain specific. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, tool, which is very efficient in performing such particular operations that is particularly yeah. trained for the embodied intelligence. So having said that, that doesn't remove the generality of these particular models because they can still actually do a lot of great reasoning to perform yeah. the planning. But um, they don't need to know French or, for example, Chinese in terms of this particular object. They, they become actually much more specific to perform these operations much more. However, so, uh, there is a big gap when you want to bring all these operations on the edge devices. Yeah, yeah. 
because um, as perhaps you and the audience know that there are many ways to reduce the complexity in terms of, for example, reducing the bit precision, um, distilling the models, you know, so yeah. to significantly reduce. So there are always these trade-offs that you need to find out and to find the best uh, parameters to yeah, um, or the uh, you know the most reliable solution. Sure. sure, we have some interesting talks about what yeah. you're describing this yes. morning. There was like at some point I was kind of lost. I was like, "Wow, that's going deep," and I understand why, yes. right? Because we need to solve these problems so yes. that we can make these models more accurate, more reliable. Uh, another another thing that I in mind my my perspective on robotics is, is that it's a lot about distribution of the intelligence. There's been about orchestrating and distributing that intelligence to have specialized nodes that know what to do and do it really well. Yes. And and is it correct to believe that AGI will enhance these various entities and like just to simplify in a robotic arm, you're going to have a very smart elbow, a very smart wrist, very smart clamp. And you don't need a one big brain that controls it all, but you need to be able to have very smart pieces that can communicate and be orchestrated. Yes, that's a very good point. So in the again, domain of robotics, distributed computing becomes a major role, both a critical challenge because you're talking about edge computing. Yeah by default means that we don't want to pass lots of amount of data either to cloud or between yep. the, the devices. So when we talk about the robotics, when there are multiple agents that we want to, they are basically mission to perform some particular you know, uh, task. So we want to make sure that this computation that is happening on each of these sensors and nodes are efficiently processed. You don't need to pass so much of data between each other, right? Yeah, because yeah, that's sure. kind of against of the edge computing, right? Nice, nice. Okay. Last question for you. So you're in the world of research, right? How close do you think AGI is to be used in production? Is it something that is like just a buzzword? Or I, I have my opinion, but I want to have yours. Is it something that people will start using in production in actual solutions soon? Definitely. I am, um, you know, in my world, again, I'm working on all different sectors of the, um, you know, federal agencies, industry, academia. So uh, over these past 10 years, there has been a huge emphasis on bringing the computation on the edge. Because yep. of many reasons, because of the privacy, because of the bandwidth requires. And I think right now with the, this basically uh, advent of all these uh, large language models and huge models, the use of the rated models, again, on the edge, it's going to be much more essential. Awesome. Well, thank you very much for your time tonight. Enjoy your night. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you.